knew it could be housing two elephants in quarantine for three months. If negotiations between government and Auckland Zoo can finalise an agreement, Premier Talangi said is possible. We have agreed in principle to the proposition for bringing the elephant here for quarantine purposes uh, for Auckland Zoo. It's, it's a quarantine requirement. To, they will be quarantined in uh, Sri Lanka, as I understand it, for three months. They'll be brought here and quarantined for three months and then taken to New Zealand. It's a protection measure for New Zealand. So therefore, we need to ensure that we have protective measures for ourselves to ensure that we don't do anything that will jeopardise the livestock of the country or our own status as, as a country without any particular animal diseases. So those are the things that we're working through at the present moment. But the principle of whether we will accept or not accept elephants is, has been given its go-ahead by cabinet subject to those things being finalised. From the discussions, um, where will they be kept if um, there's an agreement? At the present moment, we're looking at Bayer Farm. And we're talking to the company that is uh, involved with that. Well, your farm, as you're probably aware, is still under receivership, so we've got to be careful that we don't uh, do anything that will jeopardise that as well. Premier Talangi said there need to be a great deal of consideration and investigations on newest part before a decision can be made. What we have also indicated is that we need some reports to ensure that, in fact, we're not taking too high a risk with respect to the imports of elephants for quarantine purposes. And a steering committee has been established to work with Auckland Zoo, and the team is here at the present moment, to go through some of the issues that we have with regard to that, to ensure that uh, we minimise the risks that may occur as a consequence of us allowing the elephants to come here and being quarantined for a period of about three months before they are taken to New Zealand. The proposal is to look at October for the arrival of the elephants. Sirens, speeding cars and fire made for an adrenaline thriller yesterday morning at Hanan Airport. The reality of a disaster held all relevant emergency sectors display what they learn in case of an actual event. Civil Aviation Authority, Fire and Rescue, Police, Health and Airline staff got as close to a real disaster yesterday morning when they ran through an emergency drill at the airport. Emergency and rescue workers were quick to the scene. A scenario of two busloads of school children enacted as a plane crash site with rescue workers frantically pulling them from a burning fire to be rescued to the airport terminal that was made shift for an emergency centre. Though the start of the event took some time, the actual emergency procedures ran smoothly. The drill is held every two years in compliance with international civil aviation rules and procedures. We were not able to contact the head of the Civil Aviation Authority for his response on yesterday's exercise. Newer airport renovations is taking longer than planned. Previous predictions and expected completion of the renovations was prior to the second flight service, but Minister for the Airport, Honourable Toketa Langi, explained why it is delayed. It's taken a bit longer to, to complete, but uh, we want to make sure that the job is, is well done, so, um, so we're looking at about October at the present moment. The original proposal was for the renovations to be completed before the second flight service. Are you concerned it's taking this long? No, not really. I, I, I think um, we were looking at uh, doing that, uh, but at the same time we've got to be conscious of the limitations that sometimes are imposed upon us with respect to shipping and, and materials and so on. Not so much the fact that the ship is not coming up, but the fact that sometimes the materials are ordered and may take a while to get up here. Uh, I think the other thing is uh, we need to also be conscious of the fact that there are a lot of building product uh, projects at the present moment, and a lot of people are committed to those uh, projects. Some passengers has also commented on the design of the renovations, and Premier Talangi said there are airports around the world that are very simple. It's hard for me to comment about something that, in fact, is not um, has not yet been completed. So. I can't understand how anybody can say it's not really nice when in fact it's not done. 
the other thing the other thing of course is that the design is it's supposed to be uh, to build a large area that we can house people in now you know I travel around the world and I see a lot of these airport buildings are basically barns you know the big structures build in barn type fashion and all they do is uh, dress up the inside and if people have a mind to look around when they do travel they will find in fact that most of the airports are essentially large long buildings with plenty of small floor space and it's what actually happens in time that creates the atmosphere for the particular airport and the terminal buildings. Honourable Premier said there are other plans in place to look at a couple of shops airside of the building as well as food vendors outside of the terminal. Last week, Anaiki Motel and its Eastern European owner, Elona Laskia, opened its doors to their first clients. Perched on the northern cliffs of one of the most famous and picture-perfect swimming golfs on the island, the newly refurbished motel reopened its doors to three of the five units. The motel transition over the years had not been successful, especially after Cyclone Heta. Attempts by new tourism in previous years to develop the motel were also stumped, eventually ending with Miss Laskia refurbishing and redeveloped the idle motel. The motel boasts five self-contained units with only three in operations at the moment. Manager John Porter said they hope the other two units will be operating next season. He said the motel is expecting full capacity next month. And in our news bulletin for tonight and other government projects, payments to government departments will soon make, easy for, make for easy transactions as a new FPOS machine is installed at the new public service building in Fonuakula. The new machine will become operable next week for customers to make payments rather than fronting up with cash payments each time there's a need to purchase or make bill payments to government. The new introduction is expected to improve services and more efficient for the customers. And that's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.